What's going on? I hope you all are good. So, this video is about Dave Filoni just going over Ahsoka's story so far ever since he first introduced her into Star Wars all the way up till The Mandalorian Season 2. Now, of course, you have the Ahsoka show being released in August and it's directed by Dave Filoni. So what better than hearing Dave Filoni talk about his character, the main character in the Ahsoka show, and kind of hear him describe her whole story up until this point. Because Dave Filoni is just so good at describing his characters in Star Wars and just describing Star Wars in general. He's a really good storyteller and he's just so imaginative and creative. It's always enjoyable to hear him talk about Star Wars. So I thought we'd watch this and see how he describes Ahsoka's journey up until this point. If we are good at reading characters and following along with characters, we know their feelings and what they're going through at the time of a certain point in the story. But either way, it will never be boring to hear Dave Filoni talk about Ahsoka. So let's get into it. Let me level with you. You might not think of yourself as a Jedi, but you act like one. Or at I least love how the Clone I want Wars. I've had kind of an outlined plan that I had since I worked with George about where Ahsoka's progression is as far as a character at different time periods of the Star Wars universe. I've been trying to get her to this kind of pseudo samurai look, which is what her armor is based on now for quite some time. I want it to look like armor that mm -hmm. she would have found somewhere, that she'd gone into an old temple and got this ancient Jedi armor. And I that's just like how old George Lucas of, uh, samurai women wanted Darth Vader to look. Uh, from They've got a lot in common, long, long that's why they're the best and uh, Star that started to influence the costume because I wanted her to become more of a warrior-like looking character. And her lightsabers are completely new as well. There'll be a great moment where she actually and the turns idea, those things on the for the first time for Star Wars. in season two and you'll see that her blades, they're basically white because she's not a Jedi and she's not evil to kind of reflect her non-affiliation. At the end of the day for Ahsoka, even though she's left the Jedi Order, she cannot, in my opinion, deny that she was raised there and it has made a profound impression on her. She's going to do the right thing. She cannot just look at people that are in peril and walk away from it. There's just no way she could do that. It's not who she is. In the episode exactly. arc, even though she's not part of the Jedi Order, she is acting very much like a Jedi. She's pure Even though she's heart. trying to carve out a life for herself, she can't change who she is. And she becomes kind of a undercity vigilante to some degree, helping people who can't help themselves. She's extremely skilled. And I think over the years, she's probably had the opportunity to hone her abilities, but there hasn't been as much day-to-day -day ongoing battling as she was doing in the Clone Wars. So you could say on some level, while she's become more measured, her growth is more spiritual in nature. Ahsoka has a fighting style that is yeah. similar to where we left her in terms of having the two blades, but she's definitely much more in control. She's less impulsive. So majestic with it. Maybe less flashy, but it's certainly more impactful. She's so good. For me with Ahsoka, it was always important that as a young person, she's asking questions and she's not just following, that she can make up her own mind and that she can even go against what Anakin thinks. She has to be an individual. And to me, when you look at the Jedi in the prequel era, the one Jedi that has it most right is Qui-Gon. Because Qui-Gon understands that you can still love someone as long as you don't try to possess them, as long as you can let them go. He is selfless. Ahsoka is on a selfless path. And because Qui-Gon taught Obi-Wan, taught Anakin, taught her, that teaching is in her. She gets the benefit of Anakin and Obi-Wan. Both of them teach her throughout the course of her life. And so she has kind of a nicely balanced view of things where a lot of Jedi I don't think have that. So Ahsoka's tied to all of that, but she's making her own decisions outside of those character arcs. But I have to look at the whole thing and piece it That's together amazing. and bring it to a conclusion here. Much grow. You have she has a bit of a on her now, and it makes perfect sense. George and I talked at length about Order 66 and Ahsoka and what She happened. sees the Force, how and it is. Had it all figured out. She's and not the overdoing biggest it. Thing when you can have relationships. Her whole life, once she's trained by Anakin, no wonder she's so likable because she's, she's got a bit of Qui Gon in her. Looks into the from Obi Wan, she can sense the presence of her down to Anakin. To this her. is something that that Love occurs. It, she's always looked at the Force and and been able to be confident that he is there. When Order sixty six happens, she reaches out to the Force and he's gone. There is no Anakin Skywalker. So just like there are non-existence of so many Jedi, she assumes he's dead. So 
when she encounters Darth Vader at the beginning of Rebels season two, she looks into this dark void and at the center of it, she gets hit by something that's so familiar, it's overpowering, that it just shocks her back and she goes unconscious. Her unconscious mind is completely aware that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker, but her conscious mind can't handle it. She just cannot accept that truth. So she spends the whole season basically Chills. coming to grips with that fact, which we see in the Jedi Temple. I love it. That this is the truth. Once she understands the truth, that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker, she is faced with the same problem Luke Skywalker faces, which is Luke says, I cannot kill my own father. And she cannot kill this person that was her dear friend. She cannot do it. But nor will she leave him and abandon him as she feels like she did before because she feels guilt. Because if he became this terrible dark person that's done all these horrible things, she feels like she is in part responsible because she could have been there and prevented it. That's not necessarily true, but tell her that. That's... I've seen what such feelings can do to a fully trained Jedi Knight. If anyone suits the role of George Lucas to make Star Wars amazing is this man right here. I don't want Ahsoka just to exist as an animated character. She's just a Star Wars character. And Star Wars characters exist in all forms of medium and the more I can get exposure for her, I think it makes her even stronger as a character. I was spoken at length about Gandalf. So if you want to really understand Ahsoka in this time period and what's happening to her, you could read Lord of the Rings, but you, you've probably seen that, but you should read it. And, <laughs> but we get the book on letters that Tolkien wrote, where he explains in detail more of the things that are really going on under the surface of the characters. And I used a lot of that um, extensively to inform what's happening uh, to her. I'm not really a Jedi, you know. If you're not a Jedi, then what are you, Ahsoka Tano? I'll let you know when I figure it out. <sighs> and that is why Dave Filoni is perfect for the role that Kathleen Kennedy has. <laughs> this guy just knows exactly what Star Wars needs and what Star Wars is. He proves that every time he talks about it, even though I know that every time he talks about Star Wars, it's gonna be some really good stuff. It always surprises me every time also. It just feels rare nowadays for someone to have such an understanding of Star Wars. His projects prove it, it's not just his words. He really is about it. He's about what he speaks. It's just too good. I cannot wait for Ahsoka. And the way he describes her character is just, of course, better than anyone could describe it. I just love, it. I could hear him talk about Star Wars all day and I'm sure you guys can as well. I cannot wait for the Ahsoka show and to see where Ahsoka goes with her story. She's one of the best characters in Star Wars and I love the tie-in with Qui-Gon. Uh, I don't think anyone realizes that, including me. I didn't even think about it until I heard him say that, that she is very similar to Qui-Gon in the way she thinks and she's definitely going towards more of a Qui-Gon-esque mindset in this current point in the story. I love how she's going from a straight up acrobatic badass who can just take anyone out. She's kind of immature, kind of naive, but she still can get things done and she's very likable. Even though at the start she was not the most likable to most people, I've always liked her. I just thought she was a unique, cool character. But that's what she's like at the start of her story. And now she's moving into a more spiritual, like you said, force sensitive, strong in the force kind of Jedi. Even though she's not a Jedi, she basically still is. It will always be a part of her, but she's kind of changing it to be her own type of Jedi. She's a samurai Jedi, which is of course still badass. And it makes perfect sense for her character to be this more spiritual wise woman in this galaxy who could teach Luke a lot of things and she can just look over the galaxy until the next huge problem comes along and we all know who that is. I cannot wait for this series. This is the most anticipated show that we could get and we've got for a long time. This is purely Dave Filoni, the heir to the throne and there's no one better for the job and he is 100% in control of this show and so it should be one of the best if not the best Star Wars that we've had ever since Disney has taken over the mantle. <laughs> what do you guys think about this video? Put it down below. How excited are you for Ahsoka? 
I hope this got you even more hyped and reminded you that as long as this man is around, Star Wars always has hope and it's always somewhat in good hands. Anyways, like I said, I can hear Dave Filoni talk about Ahsoka and Star Wars all day. This is so much different to listening to Leslie Headland or Kathleen Kennedy or any of the actors from Acolyte talk about Star Wars. It's just, they're two different ends of the spectrum. One's very correct and one's very wrong. But if the rumors are true, Acolyte might have been shut down and it might not actually be released, which is absolutely crazy. I'm gonna wait for that to be confirmed before I make a video on it and if it is confirmed I'd like to hear your opinions on it on that video because I'd, lo I'd just love to hear what people think about the Acolyte show being shut down after everything has went through it's literally been made it will just be insane <laughs> I don't know if that's even good or bad honestly in my opinion for me it's mostly good because I had no hope for this show after the interviews and after we know who's directing it. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a positive feeling about Star Wars again, because this is what Star Wars truly is. Just magical hope and just straight up creativity. And more than anything else, it is escapism. Anyway, again, thanks for watching with me and I'll see you on the next one.